Yet again, we've seen riots up and down the country. It seems that Keir Starmer's line that anybody bothered by the Southport stabbings is a far-right thug and it's his job to protect multicultural Britain, especially Muslims, seems to be backfiring. Now, as always, for the censors, I don't promote the riots, I don't promote violence. This is simply an objective analysis into what's going on, if that's still allowed, in Keir Starmer's Britain. While I don't deny, and I'm sure there are some far-right elements among the rioters, and on top of that, there is plenty of violence going on as well which is unwelcome there's not much point on me reporting on that because the mainstream is reporting on it relentlessly and that's what this video is about two-tier media reporting and a two-tier policing system now there's no secret that the mainstream media has a massive liberal bias and that's because a the people that run it are all liberals and b because their whole life is aimed at being an anti-racist campaigner henceforth they never want to appear like they're upsetting any minority group this leads to absurdities such as on your screen now when the bbc are reporting the george floyd riots where 27 policemen are injured they're peaceful protests same thing happens in Sunderland, they're deadly. Secondly, there's allegations of a quote-unquote Muslim Defence League forming where they've been running around last night with weapons in hand, even past the police, according to some reports. This is hired many, as they feel when it comes to the English protesters, they've had dogs set on them, riot police and so forth. This is compounded by videos such as the one on your screen cropping up where you have police figures telling Muslims simply to drop their weapons off at a mosque. They won't face any prosecution. Just drop your bladed articles off at the local mosque if you don't mind, guys. If there's any weapons or anything like that, what I would do is discard them in the mosque. Leave them here. Don't give anybody any reason. They'll have any interaction with the police. Like the interaction. That's my belief. If there's any weapons, they're rid of them. That audio is quite hard to hear, but he's basically saying if you do have any weapons, drop them off at the mosque, I'm not going to search you. Do you really think that a lot of these English quote-unquote far-right protesters would be afforded the same leniency? I think if any of them had a knife, they'd be on the front of the BBC. Now, as always, I can't show you any videos with violence because YouTube may take the video down, but you can see in the still here... This is a protester getting beaten the hell out of. It's a horrible video to watch being kicked in the head and punched and so forth. And the next video is the result of a man who's also been attacked. You can see it's quite serious. Now, of course, in the interests of fairness, it would be unfair to state the violence is only going one way. It's not. The point is that this won't be reported in the mainstream media at all. The other side very much will. Another key dimension of this, of course, is that many people are starting to feel that the government and the authorities don't really care so much when it's white English people being attacked. Just look at this tweet that's doing the rounds. 2005 central London bombings, 52 dead, no riots, only outrage, no change. 2013 Lee Rigby hacked to death. 2017 Westminster attack. 2017 Manchester Arena bombing. 2017 London Bridge attack. 2019 London Bridge stabbing. 2020 Reading multiple stabbings. 2021 Liverpool Women's Hospital bombing. 2021 murder of Sir David Amos. 2024 Southport three children butchered to death. That's the only one where there's been any riots. This is a point I've been eager to make on the channel. This has been bubbling away for some time and now it's only compounded when you hear police saying they're out there to protect the Muslim community, not anybody else. That's fine. Thank I you just need to understand we're not against you guys. We're no, here. no, no. We're here to yeah, help no. and protect you. We all understand. We all understand. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate that. What are you doing? Thank you. This approach has a very Blairite feel to me. What I mean by that is assume the working classes will be on your side because they're oppressed and we're globalists who support the oppressed while ignoring their actual concerns and calling them evil if they raise them. Yeah, that strategy may be running its course now. I say that because of tweets like this from Ash Sarkar. She's a left-wing communist. She's trying to make this tweet sound as if it's a clever pun on how evil white people are and how they treat Muslims. She states... We need the moderate white community to get their house in order and denounce the extremists in their midst. We need white community leaders to speak up. Sounds ridiculous, right? But this is exactly what's demanded of Muslims and people of colour. Yet Ash is missing something quite important here. White identity as a group is effectively banned. Many decades ago, we decided as a society that we'd embrace a post-racial world. I was up for that. I think most people were. However, when you look at how things have worked in reality, it turns out that minorities are allowed a racial identity, and that's positive. But if white people ever have it, it's always in the pejorative i.e. you can say things such as I'm black and proud, the black people are a great race, 
Brown people have great resilience, but you can only talk about white people in a negative sense. They have white privilege, they have white rage, white fragility. And of course, all those phrases must be spoken by minorities to white people. My point here is that many people in Britain don't see themselves as the quote-unquote white community, yet leftists do see them that way. And if they're going to attack them on that basis, is that a game that people like Ash Sarkar really want to play? As usual, this is leftists creating the very racist conflicts that they're supposed to oppose. On top of that, in all of this mess, where do you think Keir Starmer is? Well, he's nowhere to be seen, and apparently he's going on holiday next week. But I guess after a few weeks in power declaring war on your own people and seeing cities up and down the country burn, you need a good break by the pool, eh, Keir? And just finally, I've heard many people state that it's time for Keir Starmer to resign already. And while I get the feeling, my point would be, and replace him with who? Angela Rayner. The reality is the Labour Party are utterly hopeless. I said that from the beginning. They're completely out of their depth. They can't manage the country. They can't implement law and order. The only thing we can do here is start to think about building a movement that can actually serve modern Britain in the future. These are just my thoughts, however. Do let me know what you think down below. And do consider subscribing to the channel.